night I done bought a couple bitches a flight See, I'm the where's the money, homie, fuck an interview type And I live every fucking day like it's the end of my life See, I might holla at a bitch, see what her energy like Hey, what's up, world? It's your girl, Brittany, and today I'm here with Chicago's own Rocky Fresh. How are you? Good, and you? It's always good to see you. Yeah, we're I'm buddies. seeing you a lot, I know. Um, okay, so you recently dropped Fresh Veggies with Casey Veggies. Yeah. Um, dope project. Thank you. Really enjoyed it. Thank you very um, much. Celebrating life is one of the songs that I really like. Really? You like yeah. that one? That's what's up. And um, I wanted to know, how have you been celebrating life now that you're like, Rocky Fresh, the rapper. <laughs> I just, uh, I've been working, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think, you know, out of appreciation for everything that's been going on, it's just important for me to stay working. And mm -hmm. I I was telling my friends, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really enjoy, like, making good music. Like, that's what makes me the most happy, like. Right. So, just being able to do that, you know. I bought a couple of more things than I used to buy. But outside of that, it's really about making the music. You guys also have a track on there called Sacrifice. Yeah. Um, what's like been the biggest sacrifice that you've made? Hmm, the biggest sacrifice that I made is probably with my time, you know. I, I used to hang out a lot when I was uh, first started rapping. I used to go to like clubs and stuff a lot. And lately I've just been, you know, in the studio more and just sacrificing the time that I used to hang out and have fun to substitute it with. Right. Music, so that's really it. What about like when it comes to the music? Is there ever time that you feel like you have to make sacrifices when you're like creating or when you're collaborating with other people? Um, I mean, I, I kind of go to a, a new boundary now when I'm working too. I think uh, like seeing people like for real, you know what I'm saying, win seven Grammys because he wasn't afraid to work with different people. Mm -hmm. and, bring in certain people like as artists we kind of like to do everything ourselves right and like for me I learned that you know it's important to have a team of people around you and so I kind of sacrifice you know a lot of my wants for what's best for the records you know and with that it's been making my songs sound a lot more I don't know I've been a lot more comfortable with them because they have an input from other people that I wasn't taking in the past so. Mama house the least that they can do is watch the dishes take the garbage out see the way I'm rolling now they questioning a different route see the young inflection they ain't had to pull a muscle out do you ever feel like very kind of defensive over your music or because I know like that's like your baby right yeah. so you, when you work on something it's like when you're a writer or you've been working on this and somebody's like I don't, I don't like that and you're like oh, I thought that shit was hot and yeah I mean you know I always think you know certain stuff is cool but at the same time I'm definitely not defensive over it because one, it's like I look at it in two ways. Everybody, you know, has their opinion on the music right. and, you know, they're entitled to their opinion. But then on another note, I would rather, you know, my immediate circle let me know that something is bad mm -hmm. before I send it out to millions of people and then they let me know. So, kind of work like that. And then you're um, gearing up to go on tour too. Yeah. Um, with G-Eazy? Yep. Uh, so, how excited are you? You guys are good mad tour dates. Yeah, it's, it's tight. I'm excited. You know, uh, we've been in the snow. I've been in the snow a lot in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So to be able to see some different cities consistently is going to be cool. Just to even take that Chicago name, you know, all over the country is going to be fun. But then also, me and G-Eazy, we real cool. And um, he's a dope artist. So to be able to tour with him, it's going to be an awesome experience. Um, okay, so I also wanted to talk to you about, like, social media. What are some of, like, your guilty pleasures that you like to engage in on social media? Uh, I just got into this one blog, it's like celebrity uh, car, like it's a celebrity car blog, I forgot the exact name uh -huh. of the website, but it basically just shows all the different cars that celebrities have. And okay. I think it's kind of cool to see different people's collections, kind of keeps me motivated, just the materialistic side of me, it just shows me how possible it is to get certain things. One person I saw in there that had a real impressive car collection was Tiger, so shout out to him, he's got it. Serious collection. Yeah. Okay. So, what's one thing that like blows your mind about like social media, and Twitter, and Instagram, and things that like just get on your nerves? I just think that the ill about social networks is kind of the voice that it gives to people that are not necessarily like ready to handle having that many people watch what they're saying. Okay. I think like back in the day. It was cool that when somebody, when you knew about somebody's opinion, it was because they had built themselves to be in a credible 
sort of, you know. Right. Like Martin Luther King, we knew who he was because what he had to say was actually important. And now you can just say whatever on the internet and build your little following of the people <laughs> and assume that it, you know, is the right way of thinking because right. people retweet it or like it, you know. And I think that kind of sends some of the general public off. But outside of that, it's cool. Five in the morning, I already made five stacks. The satchel pays damage, yeah, them bitches pitch black. Tried to put the city on your back, and that shit crack. Consider me a caterpillar crane, gift wrap. So what can we, like, expect? Because, like, everybody's been waiting for Rocky Fresh's debut. I mean, I'm really excited to be working on my first album. You know, that was the goal from the beginning, was mm -hmm. to be able to put out an album. And, um... Yeah, I've been working real hard on it. I got a few songs ready, but uh, at the same time, I like to travel when I'm working on music too. I think one of my best projects was Driving 88, and with that I was doing a lot of traveling. I was working out of LA a lot, out of Chicago a lot, also touring in between, and I had the ability to do that with this album that I'm working on, so I really right. want a lot of the material to come while I'm on the road, okay. and I might settle down to LA for a couple months once I'm finished with the tour to work on it some more. But um, I've been working with a lot of dope producers, my own team, as well as uh, Hit Boy and uh, Boy Wonder. Okay. And so, um, but we're we're really trying to give people a different sound of music that they they haven't heard from rap. I'm really like heavily inspired by Andre 3000 and for real. And um, been listening to them a lot lately, just seeing how musically the different things that make their sound stand out. Right. And um, one thing that I noticed was the fact that they use a lot of live music. They actually have guitars and drummers and piano players and violinists coming into the sessions and they're making records from scratch versus sampling. So that's kind of the mindset that I'm going into with my albums. You're going to hear a lot of original music, not just for me as a lyricist, but the actual production form of it. And uh, I think it's going to make for a real different sound. Yeah. I kind of feel like the a lot of artists underestimate the live band. Definitely. I saw Ross in concert and he had the live band. It's yeah. the fucking craziest thing yeah, ever. He's been killing it with the live band. It's so much more entertaining than just the DJ. Yeah, like the nah, DJ he's... plus the live band, it's like takes it to the next level. Yeah, music deserves that, you know, and I think that's one thing that's a, kind of a lost art with my generation is making everything so easy. Right. We forget, you know, about being professional and about really pushing the boundaries and you know giving the entire music scheme something to look for except for just the rap world and right. that's kind of what i want to do is make something that every musician every person that's a fan of any kind of music can appreciate versus just you know the hip-hop world so. have you like thought of a concept that you kind of like want this album kind of center around or you've been playing with a few ideas um i've been playing with a few ideas but the thing um throughout all of my projects has been you know, this balance of the past and the future. Right. And so with that, it's going to go more in depth with that. Like, a lot of the the music that I was making in the past, it touches on the current events that I was going through with that time. But the storytelling in it is not as in depth because I've been saving a lot of different stories that, you know, that went on in my life for the album. Okay. So with that, you're going to be getting, like, a closer look at, like, what really was going on in the early stages before I found rap music. You know, the different obstacles and the upsides of the things that I found um, with rap music. You're going to get certain stories about my family. You're going to hear, like, more actual names of people in my life, you know, that I'm going to be introducing to the spectrum. And with that, it's going to be like a a movie based off a true story. It's good, it's Rocky Fresh, and you are watching Global Grind TV. Get in tune. I overheard somebody saying, why he got, he got all that money, why he complaining? Because he not you, you regular. <laughs> and it tastes more like- Some Reggie Bush. Push. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly.